morning guys we made it to Melbourne so we are here in Melbourne Australia for the Australian Open which doesn't start for a little bit over a week but we have a lot of like prep and stuff that we have to do and usually for Grand Slams we get to the tournaments sometimes a week or two weeks before I think a lot of top tennis players will get to Grand Slams way ahead of time to get really used to the courts, really used to the balls. Taylor's team did not move forward in United Cup, so we didn't end up going to Sydney, which I was pretty bummed about, but I think it'll be good to have a nice chill weekend here in Melbourne because starting next week, I have so many meetings, showroom visits, meetings with Australian brands, events. I'm hosting my own event, which I have not yet announced the date for, but I will very, very soon, if not before this video even comes out. Right now it is summer in Australia and Australians have this crazy thing called work-life balance. So, so many people do not work the first half of the month. So the vibes in Melbourne, start of summer, the tennis is starting, like everyone gets super excited about the open. It is just such a fun city to be in this time of year. Whenever people ask me when they should visit Australia, I always say around like January, February, just because summer here is so fun. This is my fourth year coming to Australia. So every year for the last four years, wow, that's so crazy to think about. Every year for the last four years, I've gotten two summers a year. I have summer in the US and then I come here and get a month of summer and Australia, which is just incredible. So how I would describe Melbourne, if Sydney is LA, I would say Melbourne would be like the New York of Australia. It's much more urban. There's not as many beaches, but the food here is really good. There's really good museums here. They have really pretty gardens everywhere, like beautiful nature. I want to take this weekend to just kind of relax, explore the city, try out some places that you guys have been sending me on Instagram. By the way, I read every single DM that you guys send me. I read every single comment. I cannot possibly have the time in the day to respond to everything, but I've had so many people sending me recommendations for Melbourne, which is just like, thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. So for this tournament, we're staying in a hotel. Like, it, I don't know, it's like a hybrid hotel apartment. So we actually have a full kitchen, we have a living room. So because we knew we were gonna be spending some significant time here, we just got a place that felt a little bit more homey. It's in a super central location and we're really, really close to the courts, which is nice because I can walk on days that I don't wear heels, which probably will not realistically happen. But if I wanted to walk to the courts, I, I could. Melbourne is a very special place for me because this is where I started my social media career journey. So when I was here for the tournament in 2022, it actually kind of started in Sydney. I had Christmas through New Year's off and every single day I was just going to Bondi Beach. I started reading this book called The Mountain Is You by Brianna West. I think that's the author's name, but I read this book and something just clicked in me where I was like, I am not doing what I am meant to be doing right now. That being said, I liked my job. I was doing really good work there. I felt like I had a purpose in my work, but something was just missing. Like I was genuinely, I was very, very unhappy. And so I had these five days where every single morning I was just getting up, I was getting a juice, I was going to the beach, I was reading, I was listening to podcasts. In those five days, I was like, I have to do something different. Like something needs to change. I was not planning on leaving my job until those few days where I honestly just had this epiphany and we got to Melbourne for Australian Open and I, I quit, I left my job. But that same day was Taylor's first match for the Australian Open. I made my first little get ready with me for a tennis match and dot dot dot, here we are. So there's something about Australia that is very nostalgic for me in a way, but also every year that I come here, I feel like I consistently have really poor Novembers and Decembers. Every year for the last six years, my November, December is just a difficult time for me. And now I come to Australia in January and things just click. I get in such a good routine. I have really good momentum here. My group of friends that I have here are some of the most incredible people that I surround myself with. Being around their energy is just so honestly healing for me. So every year for the last couple years, I've just come here and really started the year out with a bang. I keep talking about this word momentum. It's just been in my mind for the last couple of months and I decided that's my word of the year 2024 and I just know being here for the next couple weeks, I'm gonna get a really good momentum for the year. Whenever I come back here, I always talk about that story because 
I left for that trip two years ago and was here for a month and I returned to LA literally a completely different person. Things can change so quickly, quicker than you even could have possibly imagined. Things can change in a day, they can change in a week, they can change in a month, and you never know. You never know when the tipping point is gonna be. Anyways, that's my little spiel for the morning. One of my other absolutely favorite parts about Melbourne is the coffee. The coffee here is so good. I don't know why, I don't know if it's something with like, you know how the bagels in New York are better because of the water in New York. Like, I don't know why the coffee here is so good. So we're gonna go get some matcha and then go on a little solo date adventure. and then it literally rained the entire weekend, which I should have expected because every single time that I've come to Melbourne, the weather here is so unpredictable. It will be 95 Fahrenheit sunny one day and then the next day freezing hurricane rain. But since it's so nice today, my friends and I are going to go to Portsea, which is kind of like a little beach town and it's right on the water. I think it's maybe an hour, hour and a half drive from Melbourne, the city. My little beach outfit though, this suit is from Montsea swim this little sweater is from rumor and then these shorts are from yellow the label which is honestly i think one of my favorite brands at this point i order from them so consistently all their stuff is so cute and every time that i wear something from there i always get questions about where it's from i also just got this little blue quilted pattern jacket from them that is at my apartment in LA but got delivered after I left. So I'm really excited to bring that for like chillier months in Europe. I'm gonna wear these sunnies from Bambi that I've been obsessively wearing for the last month. I think they're so cute. <laughs> Tully and Sarah just got back from the Gold Coast. Tully, some belly is out. <laughs> Shut up. No, it says oh my fucking god, it does too. <laughs> the walk to the beach from up here is so beautiful. You don't like snakes, Telly? No. <laughs> Telly's also wearing like five inch platform flip flops right now. Sarah just took photos for me. <laughs> it's so nice having friends when I 
I'm at tournaments, so I have people to help me take content. I was just telling her that when I'm by myself, I literally will just take a tripod to the beach or whatever public area that I'm in and take my own photos. I can hold Holly, you're not sitting in the middle. You're gonna get car sick. I know. I was. I feel okay. Er, I'm okay. No. No. I think you guys sound the same. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> I can't tell the difference between like different Australian accents. Everyone so. says Sarah's like super Australian. So Australian. But to be fair, when we go to America, you get a little twang. Yeah. Whereas I don't lose, I don't. We were just talking earlier about how Australians use cuss words differently than we do. <laughs> Excuse me. Drink some water, In the US, we use cuss words in a derogatory way, but here cuss words are just like a form of expression or emotion yeah. or endearment. Guys say it more than us, don't they, say The C word? Yes. Yeah. I don't know any Australian men. Oh, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many mozzie bites and they're so itchy. What is that? A mosquito? Do you have mosquitoes in America? Yeah, but we have mozzies. Yeah, we call them mozzies. Well, that's another Australian word. We call them mozzies, like M-O-Z-Z-I-E. Because we're too lazy to like mosquito. Oh. Caravan. Mozzies. Oh yeah, we just drove past a, what, a caravan park? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you call it? <laughs> yeah. Not a, not a trailer park. No. <laughs> it's, it's like RVs or I think we would just call it camping. But yeah, that would like be like a, a campsite. It's those things. Yeah, it's like yeah a but portable. instead of a tent, they're in a caravan. It's like a, I wouldn't say bougie, but like, uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I've never slept in a caravan. Haven't you? My mom used to take me camping a lot when I was little, which I think I liked when I was little, but I don't think I could do now. I could glamp. Yeah, glamping. I've been glamping once. I was thinking about that show, that Julia Roberts one, and how everyone's like, oh, it's gonna happen one day. I've, like, I've got no survival skills. Everyone who's camped and has like knows how to cook on a gas burner, that, I was like, alive. they've got survival skills. I read a survival book because I was preparing for the zombie apocalypse, <laughs> not for a no, cyber no, attack. That's what I, no, but I think something's gonna happen. Fun oh, fact, stop. Tal and I were having this happen. conversation. It actually scares me, can we not talk about it? There was a, there was a solar flare storm <laughs> oh, no. last week, and they're saying that it could cause like a power outage for the world for like three days. And that blind lady who was like a prophet um, said that we would also experience the one who predicted September 11th. Oh, no. Does she also say that there's aliens? She predicted COVID. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> you guys should start a survival podcast. Yes. What's your number one go-to survival technique? Uh, learning how to build a fire is like the first thing. How True. to like source water and how to build a fire. How do you, do you know how to do it? It is literally impossible for me to not get sunburned here. I put on, I'm putting on sunscreen. I probably, look at the difference between my hand and my chest. <sighs> that is tragic. I look like Neapolitan ice cream. Anyways, had a very nice beach day. Definitely made up for all of the rain this weekend. And then I just went to Nando's. And it occurred to me that people who have not been to the UK or Australia don't know what Nando's is. Nando's is a fast food restaurant and Supposedly it's better in the UK. I get it when I'm in the UK and Australia. Sweet potato fries and then this is the Supremo chicken wrap. It's actually relatively healthy. One of my favorite things about Australia is how accessible, quick, healthy, relatively inexpensive fast food is. So I get Nando's quite a bit, as I just said. There's also a restaurant here called Rolled that is a chain restaurant. It's everywhere. It is Vietnamese and they have fresh spring rolls that you can just go up to the counter and you can get like lemongrass, rice, lettuce rolls, or they have chicken avocado ones and they're really healthy. They're good. And you can get four of them, which is a whole meal for 13 Australian dollars, which is like nine US dollars. I can't think of a single place in all of Los Angeles where I can go and have a full healthy meal for 
nine US dollars. It just, it doesn't even exist there. I also posted this on my story the other day and Australians were shocked that we don't have this in the US and people in the US who haven't been to Australia were shocked that these were a thing at all. And apparently they recently, or this girl recently opened one up in New York and got some flack for it but they have fast food sushi places here. So there's a sushi counter and they have all different types of little sushi rolls that you can just get and take away. There's smoothie places everywhere, there's acai bowl places everywhere, and just the healthy, accessible, quick food here is absolutely unmatched. So I'm going to eat my Nando's and then I'm going to go to a camera store actually because I I'm going to buy a new camera today, which was kind of a impulsive last minute decision, but needs to be done for reasons I will further explain after I go. Burger. Is this from the hotel or the tournament? Seems like it's from the hotel. Oh. Thank you. Oh, Milo. You Show might like rings. Milo, actually. It okay. uh, it's kind of like chocolate milk. Burger rings. I guess it's like burger version of Funyuns, maybe. Like, this is all Australian stuff. Oh. And chocolate. These are all chocolate. Vegemite and tennis You'd ball like this, chocolate. What's that? Like name me a cookie oats. Mm, yeah. Okay. There's two Vegemites. You. I literally went to this random camera shop that I found down the street. Luckily, the first camera shop that I went into had exactly the camera that I wanted. So I will show you guys when I swap these out, but the current vlog camera that I use, which is the Canon G7X, great beginner camera for vlogging. Obviously, if you are on any form of social media, you have seen how good the photos are and how much the girlies love taking flash photos with this. So it's an amazing camera. It's so compact and I've had it for a year now and have literally brought it with me everywhere every single time that i leave the house like people grab their phone and their keys i grab my phone my keys and my camera it has come with me it has been thrown into purses it has gone to every tournament it has gone out on nights out in la gotten lost once on a night out in la and recovered like nine days later she has been through a lot i'm the type of person if i have something i'm really really gonna use it i have dropped this camera 1000 times on top of all of that it does not shoot in 4k which i started this youtube channel just as a fun hobby because i wanted to make like fun little travel videos but now i feel like i'm at the point where i should upgrade my gear a little bit and i do have a canon camera um a different camera that I use for photos that also shoots in 4K, but it's quite bulky and I can't switch out the lenses on it. So anytime that I wanna switch a lens, I have to add an adapter, which makes the camera about yay long and it does not fit in pretty much any of my purses. All of that being said, I have been a Canon girly from the start. I got my first Canon camera when I was a freshman in college. So I've been shooting on cameras and making videos and shooting photos for a long time for fun. I've always had Canon, but I really wanted to try a Sony camera. So this is the Sony ZV-E10 vlogging camera. It's still kind of a beginner camera. Like it is not crazy expensive in comparison to other ones, but a lot of my friends who have done YouTube for a long time or vlog out and about, as in they don't just make videos where they're like sitting in their... where they don't make videos just sitting in their house all day and they're out and about. Um, this is a really good option because it's small, compact, but it also shoots in 4K and you can get pretty much any Sony lens and it is interchangeable with this if I want to shoot to like a macro lens or wide angle. So this is gonna shoot in much better quality than my current videos, but it's still cute and it's small and I was so excited when I went to the store because they had the white version of it, which I really, really wanted. So I got the full creator kit. So it comes with this lens, it comes with a little microphone and I can pop this lens on and off and pretty much exchange it for any Sony lens. Moving forward, I'm going to be using this for my YouTube videos and I'm really hoping it fits in my purses, but it has a flip out. What is this? 
mirror flip out screen that the g7x also has but the g7x one flips upwards and this one flips to the side which really does not make that big of a difference so it shoots in 4k the stabilization on this camera is a little better i can switch lenses in and out oh, i'm gonna switch it out right here right now and we're gonna see how different it looks okay so this is with the wide angle lens so as you guys can see you can see way more of the background and i wanted to get this specifically because a lot of times when i'm vlogging i'm like walking around a city or i'm trying to show something or i'm trying to show the tennis site and i think just being able to see more of the frame is gonna be a little bit better for doing those sorts of things really excited about this i did want to show you guys so one of the issues that i have with the g7x is if you can see here like when you turn on the camera the lens closes and opens except mine doesn't close all of the way and this happened about a month after i got the camera and honestly almost everybody that i know that has this camera has this lens issue it is a faulty thing with the camera it breaks so easily and it won't close so then when i toss my camera in my purse or something if my keys are in my purse it will scratch up the lens which is exactly what has happened so my lens is pretty pretty messed up on this camera um this thing that also opens and closes so i can see myself when i'm vlogging uh broke when i dropped it also about a month after i got the camera so it doesn't close all of the way which is really frustrating otherwise this has been my baby i am emotionally attached to this camera i won't get rid of it because i do still really like it for photos but she was on dnr life support like it is very 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 beat up so this case is just a little silicone case that i got on amazon they have all different colors like white green blue yellow and then this is from velvet caviar i really prefer to use phone charms on my cameras as opposed to the typical camera strap that comes with it because it just makes it aesthetic and cute i'm very excited to try to figure out this camera i think i'm really determined to figure out settings specifically for this camera because on this i just used auto like i i did not learn any sort of iso or I don't even, see I don't even know what the words are for it I used auto on that but on my new camera I'm pretty determined to figure out how to actually use the settings on it I need to go shower from the beach because I have not done that yet and that's gross here we got spicy rigatoni spicy rigatoni burrata is it good? yeah but just like cool down a little bit <laughs> 